for the artificial structures we have developed to create uh, artificial exocellular matrix to, uh, to be used in different sites. Okay? If you look at the right side, you can see natural exocellular matrix. This is a high magnified picture of human tissue. So in the bottom is the form, and the up, I think that the, the top two pictures are ligaments and tendons. So if you closely look at them, their morphology and structure is quite different from what we have been using to recreate the exocellular matrix. So this is one of the problems why, this might be one of the problems why we are not getting intact tissue integration. So, and again, if you also look at the uh, pictures on the right hand side, you can see that the natural exocellular matrix have dimensions in the nanoscape. They are really, really small, and those fiber structures you are seeing have diameter in the range of about 20 to 100 nanometers. And if you look at the left side, our structures are like microns and even like macro structures. We have about 500 to 600 microns in that feature, or um, even four sizes are about 500 nanometers. So, so now the question is, next slide. Okay. The question is, can nanotechnology provide an alternative platform to fabricate clusters with enhanced bioactivity and properties for axial skin? As we have seen in the earlier slide, the natural exocellular matrix has dimension, or fiber dimension, or whole dimension, in the range of a few nanometers. So it means that we have to create structures with those kind of size ranges to recreate or to simulate the natural matrix. And so the question is, can, can nanotechnology provide the tools to recreate those kind of structures, and whether those kind of structures are going to improve tissue integration or not? Next slide, please. Okay. So we're going to do nanotechnology, but to clearly have a look at what is nanotechnology. So nanotechnology, this is nanometers, the office is very, very small. So in terms of size, one nanometer is one billionth of a meter. And that they are really, really small. So nanomaterials, which we like to call them, those materials have sizes less than 1,000 nanometers, or usually 100 nanometers, at least in one dimension. So for example, nanosphere, if you say that diameter less than 1,000 nanometers, or usually the diameter less than 100 nanometers. Next slide, please. Okay. So this is the um, a Again, a cartoon to show you the perspective of the lens here we are talking about. So uh, on the slide where the blue background is, that actually shows the size range we are adjusting. So below that blue, you can see a lot of structures, and these are some of the man-made matter structures. Currently, we are using a single for medicine technology and aging applications with unique properties. So this this is the range that we are talking about right today. Next slide, please. Okay. So nanotechnology is actually an amalgam of tools, techniques, and processes for the precision manipulation of natural and nanometer scale. So nanotechnology has given us the ability to uh, look, look at these small things, oh, I would say, ability to see those small things, ability to feel those small things, ability to make those small things, and ability to use those small things to create macro-sized structures with unique properties. So that is the capability nanotechnology is giving us. Next slide, please. Okay. So now we, we put nanomaterials out there. And what is the uniqueness of nanomaterials? Why nanomaterials are unique? And why we want that to improve the tissue and share structure? So the uniqueness of nanomaterials are not going to be because of a lot of well properties nanomaterials exhibit compared to the existing materials. But two important properties I want to mentioned what is the high physicality of these nanomaterials. Okay? So when you try to reduce the size of the material, what you are increasing is the area of the material. So in case of bulk material, you actually are actually creating bulk property in the material. We are not experiencing the surface property. But once when you take a nanomaterial, the surface property predominates compared to bulk property. It means that the property of the nanomaterial is going to be quite different from the bulk material. And another important point is that in the case of bulk material, classical physical physics, the rules of classical physics go on the property of the material. 
But when we reduce the size of these materials and by keeping nano scale, what happens is that we will go to replace what the quantum code the quantum effect. It means that those materials are going to show in totally different behavior compared to the compared to the first materials. So because of these two properties, nanomaterials show in totally different properties compared to the first materials. For example, if you take silver, a pearl silver is shiny and has a different property. But if you make it into a nanoparticle, its color is different, its optical property is different, its malady property is different, everything is different because of two major reasons I mentioned earlier. So nanomaterials show altered tensor reactivity, or nanomaterials show improved or altered strength. So you know, if you look at the pictures in the bottom, you can see a lot of products you may be using currently. The property, the properties of those, many of these have been improved by the incorporation of nanomaterials, either to improve the strength or to improve um, the chemical reactivity or something else. So that's why nanomaterials is gaining a lot of uh, interest these days because we can actually create materials with different properties or improve properties using these nanomaterials. And so it's in biology now is uh, a lot of interest because when you look at that, the sun has a size of about 10 micrometers, which is really large compared to nanomaterials. So it means that these nanomaterials can go inside itself and can do things which other materials weren't able to do so far. Okay? So nanomaterials, for example, quantum dust, is a good way you heard about those kind of things, nanoparticles and quantum dust, they actually can do a lot of things which the traditional materials weren't able to do. Next slide, please.